Hello everyone, my name is Gus and today we have an interesting episode because last time we showed a video of us cave diving in the Bahamas, there were a few people that really, really enjoy the fact that we post our dives and we rarely edit anything, right? Sometimes the editing that I do is mostly due to the length of the video, like we have, I don't know, two hours worth of content or something and nobody i don't want to say nobody but because there's always people that are like i would watch it but you know most people don't want to watch uninterrupted two hours of us cave diving but there were a lot of people that were like just post the whole thing post the whole thing now the good news is that for day three we were in abaco for a week for day three we actually have about 28 minutes of video from that dive so i figure i'm just gonna put it out there unedited no cuts just every single second that Woody recorded from the dive. And I'll just talk above it to give you some clarity. So here we go. We are starting at the surface this day, beautiful day in Abaco. This is in the Bahamas at uh, Dance Cave. And we are in the area where we get ready. Now, this is pretty boring, but people like to see everything. And again, like I said, I, I'm leaving everything even with his shaky uh, camera because he's setting it up. But here I am putting my fins. This area uh, where we get set up is it's not super even. So it's kind of awkward to put your stuff. But anyway, we, we make it work. Now notice one thing that I, I want you guys to notice on this one is the fact that some of the things in my setup are kind of sticking out. Uh, here on the water, you can't see it. But you see that green hose? That's my oxygen hose. That green hose is kind of sticking out, which doesn't work for cave diving, right? We want to be as streamlined as possible. So if you notice here, Woody's helping me get set up. And, you know, the best way to make sure you're streamlined, because you don't have eyes in the back of your head here. He's bunging my tank um, over. You don't have eyes in the back of your head. The best way to do this is to actually work with a teammate. Now... In this setup, I'm using a setup for the Sidewinder. This was taken back in February, I believe. Um, the setup for the Sidewinder that I have, I actually changed. We went to the Kiss Rebreather factory, and I don't know if you've seen that video, but I'm going to link it up here. And while we were there, we actually streamlined a lot of my configuration. But anyway, this is the old configuration. But notice that Woody is stocking the hoses back in. So notice the black one is completely out of the way. Now the green one is completely out of the way. So we help each other streamline i did the same for him you know um later on he didn't record that part but you know at some point he's just helping me right now get you know fully set up and once i'm fully set up i turn around and i do the same for him i help him out you know get everything situated nothing sticking out and um that's you know before we go diving All right, so next video, we're coming in. Let me tell you a little bit about this dive and the objective of this dive. So most of the people that go to dive, cave dive in Abaco, especially if you are if you dive rebreathers, want to see Fangorn Forest, which we've talked about before on the show. is the most ornamented cave, underwater cave in the world. Um, and it's a really, really long dive. That, that, that's been my longest cave dive to date. It's a little bit over three hours and at some point of the dive you get you know deep i guess uh, i don't want to say very deep because there's always someone who's like do you think that's very deep anyway you get to about 150 feet um which i would say is like i don't know 45 to 50 meters and this the, the way you do that dive with brian kaycock who's the person that is in charge of protecting these caves and guiding people through the caves the way you, the way he sets it up is that, uh, well, let me let me go back for a second. I'll I'll, I'll finish telling you about Brian Kaker in a second. But notice the communication with the lights. Brian is gonna ask me if I'm okay. See, circle. I say I'm okay, and then Woody circles to say I'm okay too. So we don't have to turn around to see like, are you okay? We can just communicate with the lights. All right. So moving on to Brian Kaker, what I was talking about earlier. So Brian basically sets it up in a way where you kind of walk, work your way all the way to Fangorn. Right? I don't know what he's talking about. He's just comparing lights, I think. So yeah, so <laughs> for this dive, I gave Woody a, a video light. And notice that he lights up the whole room. 
Whereas our lives are more like a um, narrow beam, like mine you see is like a hot circle. They're better for communication and it's really the lights that we use for cave diving. This one is just, he was videoing, so. Yeah, it's big, that's right. I know, and for people that say it's like, you know, how can you be a cave diver if you're so big? Well, there are big caves. Actually, most of the caves that we dive are big. But anyway, back to the uh, the story about Fangorn. So anyway, you, you have to work you have to work your way up to be able to do those massive dives. And this was the day before we did Fangorn. So I think we started diving on a Sunday, and then um, you know we had a dive on Monday. We had Fangorn on, on Wednesday. So this was Tuesday's dive, and we've posted the videos for the previous two dives before in the channel. But anyway, this dive goes. I think our max depth was 125 feet. So a little bit less than 40 meters. And our, the length of this dive was 84 minutes. So about an hour and a half. So it's just to prepare you for Fangorn. And the, this dive was called the Big Loop. So you do a big circle in the cave. Not a whole lot of crystal to see in the Big Loop. But again, this is not a dive to see crystal specifically. Because next day you're going to Fangorn for it. Which is the most ornamented underwater cave in the world. So you're going to see crystal for, you know, ages. But this dive was mostly to kind of get you used to the kind of big swims and depth that you're going to see going to Fangorn. So we're doing a 360 of this room. It's a massive room. And notice that I'm here in the middle and Brian is leading the dive. Once again, I, I will try to add some clarity for those of you who are either non-divers or not cave divers and kind of explain things along the way to the best of my ability. So here's an interesting part. So notice that Brian is going vertical, which for most people, they say, you know, if you're a cave diver, you can never be out of trim. That's not true. We can go out of trim in places where you have to go out of trim. This is a good place. There's like a ledge here, and we wanted to poke our head in the ledge. But notice there's stalactites all over the place. If we were horizontal, we would just kick them. Like this, the feed will be up here, and he can just break stalactites, right? So we go vertical. Notice I'm doing the same. I'm mirroring Brian along the way. We go vertical to be able to poke our heads up there in that, those holes without having the fear that we're going to break something that took nature tens of thousands of years to make or thousands of years to make. I don't know. These are not super big but regardless we don't want to break anything so we go vertical so yeah don't be uh you know confused with the fact that as cave divers you always have to be horizontal and perfect that's not the case it depends on the cave depends on what you're doing like eagle's nest is another good example to get to the ballroom at eagle's nest it's like a like a chimney basically it's a tube and i mean it, uh, unless you're super tiny i don't think you can fit if you're going horizontally you have to go head first which is typically what people do or you can go feet first i guess but uh, head first is the preferred way to do it so see woody's poking his head up there he's vertical right now you can't see it because he's he has the camera in his mask but yeah and then after that we go back to horizontal because horizontal is easier for swimming moving through the water and having control so see, now Brian is back to horizontal. And me too. So here we're actually looking at these uh, holes. See, I'm pointing my light down the hole at this point. These holes are literally on the rock. And they seem to go down for like hundreds of feet or hundreds of meters. Like you can't see the ending of it. And they're like a perfect circle. Let's see if Woody can kind of show you at least the beginning of it. It's hard to capture with a camera, especially with these... Uh, with the light on the way like this thanks buddy but you can see the hole goes there and uh, they go pretty deep so that was a drop of water just hitting that thing for years and years and years and made that hole all the way down so we are swimming i noticed my uh, right canister is like out of place so i think i either forgot to attach the bottom of it or it came undone or something like that but you can see it's like out of trim i'll point out what i'm talking about later it didn't affect the dive or anything but it bothers me you know you, you kind of set this up with like ocd level and then you're watching the video and you're like oh man but i mess up like that 
Well, those are the holes. That's what I'm talking about. It's just lights too bright. Come on, can we see it? Ah. <laughs> Almost. Okay, so this is a good one. I want to stop right there for a second. So you see this line coming down here? This line right here, and I was vertical looking at that because you can, there's a hole up there where the line goes into. This line comes from a hole that honestly, I find hard to believe that any human fits through. It's like super, super small. And Brian calls this hole the birth canal. Interesting name. Um, and only three people have gone through the birth canal. And that was Brian and a uh, cave explorer from Japan. He told me the name, but I, I forgot it already. I'm sorry. And Agnes, who we have featured here on the channel a couple times. So Agnes actually was there in Abaco, and she was the very first person who fit through the birth canal. So I thought that was interesting. And that was the line she carried with her. So this line right here that I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, I actually touched, um, was laid by Agnes. So she fit, she went through the birth canal and left the line there, and it's kind of like tied up in like a knot over here. So I thought that was cool. Yeah. Wish we could see where it's going into, but you see, these are all rough cuts. It's just Woody uh, turning the camera on. Like I said, there are zero edits in any of this footage. All right, so you're swimming. Notice that the cave is so massive. It's funny because when Woody pans the camera away from the divers, I, honestly, you can't tell that there's water there. You know, if it, it looks like a regular cave. Like if somebody told you that was a cave with air, you would be like, oh, that's a cool cave. And you, because you can't tell that there's water. All right, so here I'm kicking just to maintain. I don't know what he what he's showing me there. So some of these um, some of these cookies and arrows and stuff that are in the line, like he covered it on the on the briefing, and obviously I remember that day when I did the dive, but it's been months and months now. I don't remember exactly, but some of these will have the name of the original exp explorers, and obviously the cave explorers that laid out the line and and left the the arrows in there. Um, they, you know, all the names are kind of like legends, right? Uh, you, you, you see the name, you're like, oh, wow, that, that's cool. And, you know, you get to see the names of, of everyone and he's telling you, you know, where we are and what line it is. And you'll see that I stop in some places and I read them. I just think it's so cool. And, you know, Woody and I have dived in caves where the original line is still in there. That was laid by Sheck Exley or some of the pioneers of cave diving. And they're still in there. The original line is in there. Mainly freshwater caves. Because in salt water, the line gets kind of all messed up. and needs to be changed way more often. So you see, I'm mimicking Brian. If you notice his trim, it's kind of diagonal. So I'm doing the same thing. Uh, and that's basically, that was my MO, right? Uh, in the cave, if Brian is, if Brian is doing something, I want to do it the exact same thing. So I try to be like a mirror. Like, why is he diagonal? I don't know, but I'm going to be uh -uh. diagonal. And then he fixes himself, and by the time I get to that point, yeah. I will fix myself and go horizontal. So that is kind of like a rain of crystal. So there is some crystal in, in the big circuit. That's just not as much as you see the next day of Fangorn, obviously. Fangorn looks like that the fortress from Superman when he goes to like North Pole or whatever. I don't know if you remember the original Superman movies. I love those movies. But uh, yeah, that's how he looks. All right, we're going deep. And you can see the meters on the right. So we're approaching 30 meters, so about 100 feet. All right, this is cool. So in an area of the cave, you can see that when the cave was dry, who knows how long ago, sand from the Sahara would blow in and landed in the cave. So Brian is showing us a piece of sand from the Sahara. So you can see he rubs it with his fingers. <laughs> How cool is that? Of course, it's not cool. He's raining it on me. I'm like, dude, really? <laughs> that was great. 
And you can see the difference in terrain changes as well. Oh, that was cool. That was from the original Explorers. So these are an arrow, goes in two directions, both ways you can uh, go to the exit. So think about it in a circuit. So think about a circuit like a circle, right? That's a circuit. So a circuit is you're going one way and then you go around and come out on the other side. So this point that he's showing is basically on the other side of the circle. Either way, whether you come back or keep going, you're going to go to the exit and it's the same distance. So that's why there's two arrows, one arrow pointing this way, one arrow pointing the other way, where we made it all the way halfway through the circuit. And the other thing I want you to notice is there's a little thing on the line that actually works like a wind suck. Like it tells you if there's any current, it moves with the current. I thought that was cool. It's just a little piece of tape. So this thing right here, it's like a little piece of tape and you can see it moves, see? <laughs> with a with a current or, you know, if anything makes a move, it will just it will just move around. So that was cool. So we're halfway through. And notice that Woody switched to his cave light and his more narrow beam. Uh, he's, he's switching again, looks like. Yeah, we're just being careful here. There's some stalagmites that we don't want to bump into. And this is a good example of why we don't tie ourselves to the line. People are like, why don't you just tie yourself to the line? It's easier not to lose it. Yeah, but there's also, you know, the line is tied into all of these formations and then you're going to be running into them. And it's a huge pain. I think uh, right here Brian is showing us like some example of life in the cave, like little organisms. When I see that, I look at it and then I back out. See, I'm doing back kick to let Woody come close and film it. Kind of get out of the way. Look at that thing. Oh, it's killing me. It's like floating up there. It should be like this one, attached and uh, straight. Anyway, I won't, I won't point it out anymore, but you see what's bothering me. So he's showing us live. Let's see if we can get the camera close. Too much light, but he's right there walking in on his finger and then he's going to swim away. It's right on his thumb. I don't know if you saw just hovering and watching the show. Bye. Okay. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> it's just like a little, uh, it looks like, I don't know, like a um, translucent little bug. Like a ladybug, kind of. But you can see through it. Like you can see their organs. You can see their heartbeats. It's, it's heart beating underneath it. It's, it's the weirdest thing. Or maybe it's not the heart. I don't know. But it's the. There's organs inside and he's moving. Oh. Telling Woody, you can go second. Okay. He's like, no, 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 let's right. go. Yeah. Uh -huh. He's telling me there's a line there. Could be a jump to another section of the cave. It's right there. We typically line, especially if there are jumps, you know, we line it to say that's a jump. Uh, a jump is a connection between the main line of the cave and another line that goes into a different passage. Because one of the rules of cave diving is we always have a continuous guideline to the surface. Or at least to open water. It doesn't have to be all the way to the surface. But the idea is once you reach the end of the line, you can go straight up and come out of the water. Huge, huge cave. Yep. That's true. And the other thing is, you know, the different in terrain too. Like, obviously, this wasn't put here by man. And, you know, the, the, it looks like construction debris, you know? Um, changes in the cave when it was dry and stuff falling off the ceiling and stuff like that. And you'll notice... You know, at some points of the cave, the, the floor and the ceiling will completely look different. It's pretty cool. And the cave, 
a day day dance cave rather uh, in Abaco. It's like a multi-level cave. You know, he uh, it will be like a deep level, and in that deep level things look one way, and then you'll be in the middle level, and things will look completely different in the middle level, and that's because you know when it was dry at the bottom there was a climate and there were things on earth happening and then by the time that was covered with water it's kind of like froze, frozen in time looking like that but the climate and everything happening uh in in the in the world basically will continue to affect levels two and one and then level two will be flooded and eventually level one was flooded so you end up with those levels looking kind of completely different i think this dive was in level two I think there's a level below it, the level that goes, you know, 150 plus, 150 feet. So here we are at 34 meters, which is right around 120 feet, something like that. So we're about to hit our max, max depth. And that's the beauty of rebreathers, right? So if you were in open circuit at 120 feet, you would have, I don't know, five to 10 minutes, and then you start heading up. But here we can stay for a lot longer because our rebreathers are not using gas, you know, they're, they're recycling our breath. So we have plenty of time. So this dive was only 84 minutes and we could have done a six hour dive with our rebreathers. So there's arrows and cookies there. That's what I stopped to read. You can't really read it because the light's so powerful, but there's some lights and cookies in there. And right now, Woody's using not his video light, he's using his cave light. We both dive with the same light. It's the Orca Torch D630. That's our primary cave light. So we both have the same one. And uh, that's what he's diving with right now. He's not using the video light. So I believe the, the um, video light has a 120 degree beam angle. So it's just, it goes 120 degrees. It's just massive. It's, it meant to, uh, it's meant to illuminate a huge you know, room or a huge rack or a huge whatever, right? Solid light. Whereas the cave light has a seven degree beam angle. Oh, so uh, seven or eight, okay. something like that. So it's more narrow and it's better for communication. And for light penetration as well, it will travel further. There's the line. So one of the things I want you guys to notice too is the head pattern that we follow as divers. So notice it, it, the, the camera is in Woody's head. So imagine that whatever the camera is filming is what he's looking at. So he's looking at the left, looking at the cave. Then he looks at us. Then he looks at the lights. What are we doing with lights? Where are we pointing to? Then he looks at the line. Notice how he illuminates the line. Okay, there's the line. And then he will go and pan out again to the left. And that's how I dive too. It's like we all follow the same thing. We're not staring at the line the whole time we're not line divers right so we are cave diving we just point at the uh, at the line once in a while it's like okay still there still there lines typically go on a straight line so you know it's not like 10 seconds later it's going to be completely somewhere else um that's not how that works so we are you know we look at the line there it is and then we just look somewhere else you know we don't we're not constantly looking at the line so of course if we see something on the line like that arrow that's going to get our attention, so I'm going to shine the light on and read what he says. In Florida specifically, I don't know if this is a, if this is everywhere in the world, but in Florida, the, the arrows, which point to the exit, as we've described before, will tell you how many feet are you from the exit. So I like to read them, right? I look at it, and when I'm going on the way in, it tells me, see, he's giving me okay right here. Um, and notice that he's not, I'm going to go back for a second here. Notice that when he's giving me okay, he's not pointing at the at the at the floor. That's kind of useless, right? He's pointing it at a place where we can both see it, right? That's the difference. Is I, I feel like when people watch our videos, uh, especially people that are not cave certified, that might be instructors or whatever, they're like, Oh yeah, you do signals with a light. Big whoop. But it's not just that, is there's a reason behind it where you do it. See? So he makes a big circle that we can both see. If he, if he would do the okay right here or close to him, below him, we're, we wouldn't be able to see it, right? There's a, there's a way, there's a method to the madness, let's just say. 
And when I want to know if he's behind me, all I have to do is cover my light. Because I cover my light and I will see that his light is shining behind me. Right? So I don't have to turn around to look that he's back there. All right. So here is uh, here was my favorite part of this of this dive. We're about to go into a section that was basically like an obstacle course. It was the tightest part of this cave of this dive, uh, not the cave. There's other tighter parts. Of course, we already talked about the birth canal, but for uh, for us, the tightest part that we went to in this dive, and I love you know obstacles like that because. It really makes you kind of put in practice all the things that you've been working on. Buoyancy, trim, kicks, awareness of the size of your kit, not just your body, but your entire kit. Um, it puts everything in perspective, right? All the hard work, everything you've done, here, here it is. Unfortunately, and I don't blame him because I would have done the same, would he stop recording and focus on not destroying the cave but you will get to see at least the beginning of it so we're swimming up and at some point we're gonna get to the tunnel i wish we had more footage of it because you guys would have seen it's like i mean it looks like madness um you know there's stalactites and stalagmites and things growing from the sides it's like how do you go through this without completely destroying this place? And we did, but it takes it takes some practice. Of course, Brian wouldn't have taken us there if he didn't think we were we were capable of navigating through that without messing the place up. And of course, experienced cave divers and cave explorers watching this will be like, "Dude, I can drive a truck through that, <laughs> right?" It's all about perspective. Is that an old joke? I don't know if you guys have heard this before joke about the uh, Titanic where they said that the sinking of the Titanic was a terrible incident, right? A terrible disaster and a lot of people died. But it was a miracle for the lobsters in the kitchen. Right? It was a miracle for them. Like, what are the chances the boat was going to sink and they were going to survive? It's all about perspective. So here we go. Two arrows pointing to the exit and we're heading up there. From now on, remember I mentioned that we made it to the uh, other side of the circuit where the two arrows were pointing in different directions. So every arrow we should see now will be an arrow pointing one way. So we're, we're, we're exiting. We already hit the middle and now we're on the way out. By the way, I don't want to bore you with the details about circuit diving and in, in, in caves specifically. There's some protocols that we follow for that. This is covering cave diving class. But, um, you know, it's not something that you should try even if you're intro to cave. You don't, you know, uh, unless you're with an instructor. So you can see how this thing starts getting pretty small here. And there's stalactites galore. It's like an explosion of formations everywhere. And you have to be really, really careful. So I think Woody only had like a few more seconds of this and then... We caught but you see it starts to get tight and there's formations everywhere so we have to be very careful i love this part this was my favorite part it's awesome and that's it we're coming to an end ascending i think this is past the past the um the layer where where now we're in fresh water. So fresh water is sitting on top of salt water, and you go through that halocline on the way down. So we're now on fresh water, which is great because as you're coming out, your gear is kind of getting rinsed. You know, every time you go diving in salt water, you have to you should rinse your gear with fresh water, so the salt water doesn't you know accelerate the corrosion and kind of destroy your gear. So here in the caves, there is a layer of fresh water above the salt water so as you're coming out and you're doing your deco or your safety stuff depending what you're doing then your you know your gear is getting rinsed which is a big big benefit but anyway that's all we got i hope you enjoyed it again this is completely unedited and every single second that i have from that dive which was an 84 minute dive that we did in abaco and it was absolutely awesome 
If you haven't seen the dive that we did on day two when we went to the sanity room, tons of crystal to see on that one. And again, more explanations. And I'm going to leave it right here. And by the way, some of the members asked me, some people asked me, can you just post the videos without any commentary whatsoever? It would be cool to kind of play it behind the scenes and fall asleep to it. The answer is yes. I'm actually uploading this video to members only, and that's because members get no ads whatsoever. We demonetize all the videos to members, and that way you can fall asleep watching this 30-minute, 28-minute dive. We'll see you on the next one.